My name is Thomas Vale. Or at least it was. I'm a photographer. I had it all. A wife, Allison, friends, a career. And in one moment, it was all taken away. All because of a single photograph. I have it. They want it. And they will do anything to get the negative. I'm Larry Herzog. This is Ian Toyington. We were talking Hi. about how, during the commentary on, on Through a Lens, how directors often, we communicated by telephone. We didn't meet Ian and I finally met uh, before Through a Lens Darkly episode. So we'd actually, I'd shot two episodes and spoken to Larry a lot on the phone, but we never actually met face, face to face. Right, and we had great directors on Nowhere Man, but when you see, when I saw Ian's film just come back in Daly's form, it just was outrageous. It was, you know, I need to marry this person quickly and they need to do everything. And it is, it is continually amazes me that in television, where the the show writers executive producers tend to guide it as opposed to directors that directors do have within those realms the ability to make such a big difference but i wanted ian to talk a little bit about how he first came in when before he ever did yeah. an episode it was it was quite funny because it was very much a a, a mutual feeling um my relationship with larry because when I was first given the pilot, I mean, usually on a show like like this, your agent will send you the pilot and say, you know, would you be interested in doing it? They're interested in you doing it. And I watched the pilot and, the, and I, I, I just loved it instantly. And I knew that this was a show that I would have a great affinity for and or with. And um, there was one shot in particular, which was a 600 mil shot of a car coming down a very, very long road. Um, towards, if I remember correctly, towards a, a, a crossroads. And I couldn't believe the length that this shot had been held. It just went on and on and on. And what was going through my mind is that somebody, whoever Larry Herzog was, must have fought so hard to have achieved this shot remaining in the pilot at this length. Because it would, to me, it was 100% right. And yet I knew that must have been a lot of people who would have thought it was 100% wrong to hold it that long. I knew that there was something that was good. Larry and I would have a, probably a very good relationship and a very positive working relationship. And, and we became very good friends. You're a storyteller as a director. And if you can tell it in a, in a visually exciting way, if you can tell it in a a vibrant, energized, emotional way. All these elements are terribly, terribly important. And the great thing was that the dailies we'd shoot and the dailies we'd go down to LA, and it was always exciting getting the response from Larry because I knew that there was something you knew he would, he would love what we were doing up there. And you, you know, a great script demands of you as a director to make it a great show. But how did you even... It's so you can follow your dreams, Tom. So you can stay on top of the world. Well, television, too, in general, I was talking to some writers today, is basically a medium of craft. You know, talent is certainly wonderful and important, but it's a job. You're, you're consuming a script a week. You have, as writers, as it's get the job done. And I find that a lot of directors I had worked with in the past they were they were very competent, extremely competent, but they were they were craftsmen, and maybe to my book, maybe not incredibly inspired. And you know, you could write an episode that had your heart in it on a certain level, like through a lens or Enemy Within, and and you feel it, and you feel the color and the way it smells and how it should sound. I mean, it, 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 the scripts are going to be better if it, if it starts on the page like that. And a director will walk in to your office on the first day of prep and say, you know, should the gun have been in the top drawer or the middle drawer? Now, even though that might ultimately be an extremely valid question, it shows the difference where many people's focus is different. You know, I, I, even on some commentaries on Nowhere Man, some director's going to be a little bit more, why did he go through this door instead of that door, or, you know, da da da. And again, these issues might be incredibly valid, but first and foremost, what you want when you're trying to do something that excited me, which Nowhere Man happened to be that, is you want someone to come in and say, 
it smells this way, it looks this way, it tastes this way. Oh, and by the way, I think the gun should be in the middle drawer. Fire! No More Man was a show that for some of us had a lot more emotional investment, not just whether the show was a hit or whether it wasn't, which wasn't really the big emotional investment. It was just, can we tickle every bone that is is jiggling to, to make it everything we hope it can be. And, and can we it. push the envelope? Can we push the envelope of, uh, this is 10 years ago. Um, right, although I know in the office, we weren't really trying to push an envelope. We were just, it's just that things that excited us yeah. were out of the box. Yeah. She was getting ready to leave you, wasn't she? But it was never just to break rules. It was never just. No, but, just but it was a, we had the opportunity because the show lent itself in that direction. It right. gave us that opportunity. Each script was a new world, a new tone. I mean, the show, despite many people's anxiety about it, was an anthology, you know. And we wanted to go to wonderfully interesting, fun uh, places. And, and surprise ourselves and everyone else each week. And it wasn't merely a matter of continuing along the line or, or, or really redoing what we did in the pilot. It was new. If I remember correctly now, um, I didn't have any prep on this. Someone else was going to do this show. Doppelganger? Yeah. Was it, it was Doppelganger. I'm sure it was. Yes, it was Doppelganger. Oh, is this the one? Yeah. Someone. And the, they fell out. Um, I think it was pilot season, whatever. Um, and I remember Bruce coming to me and saying, look, Ian, I, I've just had a you know, call from Larry. Um, would you be interested in doing another show? And Larry would love you to do it. And I said, yes. I mean, it's, without a doubt, I'm totally, uh, you know, I mean, I'm passionate about the show. Um, and then I stopped for a moment and I said, when you say the next show, you don't mean the next show like the next show we're going to shoot like, like in an tomorrow. Hour. <laughs> yeah. And he said, yes. And I said, well... I mean, I hadn't read the script, and this is like we were, I think it was, this was on the Wednesday, and the, this show, the reason I knew it was on a Friday, that shot, was because that was when we started shooting this show, and then there was a three-day weekend. So I, I shot the first day's work um, with vir virtually no prep, and then I think I flew back, and Larry and I talked, and then we went into the whole, and then I went into the whole show. So it was not the normal, it was, I mean, normally you have, you know, seven days prep for a, for a show like this. Who put you up to this? I said it never happened, okay? I've never seen you before. Your name isn't Tom Vale. We didn't spend the night together. You don't have a strawberry birthmark on your right shoulder. What are you talking about? Oh, please. You know, Tom comes into, goes into a small town where someone else is in business as Tom Vale, photographer. You know, yet another Nowhere Man sort of catchy intrigue. Now, what's this and who is this? And obviously, there began to grow some sense in the episode that his, in his, in his possession, was something important, a negative, a photograph or something. And, and um, you know, there's, that's the doppelganger concept. There's a double out there. Tom, if they find out that you have this, you know what they can do. I don't know if I feel as strongly about the material in Doppelganger as I did with Enemy Within and Through a Lens. But um, again, it's very effective. It works. It's enjoyable. I, it may not quite engage my passion. And it's interesting that I say that, and it's interesting and probably coincidental that Ian ended up on these bookend shows that examined Tom's life. Mm. And interesting that that examination always came by some involvement with a woman. You know, it was, you know, it was Maria Bello in Enemy yeah. Within, yeah. And, it, and it was Sydney in, in Through a Lens. But I guess there's, this is that romantic part of me, you know, that just, you know, there was that shot right out of Oklahoma in Enemy Within where you waited till sunset and they're at the fence and it looks like a 1940s MGM backdrop. It looks like, and, it, and I think I'm a sucker for that. I mean, I think if I was I think crazier was, than I was, I would have had him sing. You know? I think that was one of those shots where we really shouldn't have done it. We didn't really have the time to do it and yet you still go, that was, the six, that was my 600 mil shot. Yeah. That. Thank you for noticing. In 25 years of directing, I've been 
I worked on a lot of, fortunately worked on a lot of great shows, but this, without a doubt, is one of the greatest that I had the opportunity of working on. And considering that was 10 years ago, I'm enormously proud of what we did. Yeah, me too. Um, and uh, I just hope we can do it again. I would, I would love to do something of that quality and have the opportunity. Certainly in the light of what we can now do technically, we have moved on and advanced to such a great amount in, t in, in 10 years. Uh, we, could, uh, we could hit the moon. Okay, let's go. Let's just let's find a just few million it. bucks and let's do it. go do it. I'll call my mom. We got some <laughs> costumes in the barn. We can put on a show. We'll, we'll, we'll bring Tom.